This helps you differentiate iron deficiency anemia from other hypochromic microcytic anemias. Hi, today we're going to talk about hypochromic anemias. Specifically, iron deficiency anemia. And I want you to have a strong foundation about terminology first before you move forward with this video. So please watch my iron metabolism and RBC indices video because I'm going to be using terminology from those videos moving forward to anemias. And so grab a cup of coffee and hang tight. We're going to have a long video or a short one depending on how I'm gonna do this about anemia today so let's get to it okay so first up we have iron deficiency anemia iron deficiency anemia is the most common anemia worldwide okay that's a trivia for you and 2 billion people worldwide are affected by iron deficiency anemia so what are the main reasons for iron deficiency anemia so iron deficiency anemia happens when there is an increased demand for iron but there's an abnormal utilization of iron or there's not enough iron You're, you have poor diet or there's an increased blood loss or malabsorption there's also this event in your life when you're having growth spurts and pregnancies all those demand more rbcs so for pregnancy you're literally making a new person in you so you're making new blood and if you don't have enough iron to make those rbcs you're gonna have iron deficiency anemia same with growth spurt you're growing so you're gonna need more blood on a growing body this happens during your teenage years or when um the toddler years those things create demand for RBCs and if there's not enough iron then you get iron deficiency anemia. So there are three stages to iron deficiency anemia. The first stage is iron depletion. Uh, pretty much it's asymptomatic at this stage. So your CBC will look normal but your TIBC is up. That's the total iron binding capacity and your RDW is up. Also there is a decreased. This is the only part that there's an abnormality on the first stage of iron deficiency anemia is that your iron stores in the res or mps monophagocytic system cells or reticular endothelial cells um, of the bone marrow has a decreased amount of hemosiderin or your iron stores this is the first sign of iron deficiency anemia but overall you're still asymptomatic at this point Second stage is iron deficient erythropoiesis. So at this point, your plasma iron is going down. You don't have enough iron on your plasma. And now it's showing. So iron for heme synthesis is now affected. Okay, it's not just your iron stores, but your iron that is needed to make hemoglobin is now affected. And now, since you have less iron, but you still continue to make protoporphyrins, and if you don't know this, please check my video on heme synthesis. I'm going to link it up, up above. And so, let's continue. So if you don't have enough iron, but you're still making protoporphyrins, you now have an excess of protoporphyrins in your heme synthesis. Now, if you have excess protoporphyrins, it forms a complex with zinc which is ZPP, zinc protoporphyrin. So if there's an increase of this, that means you don't have, that's also a sign that you don't have enough iron to make protoporphyrin rings. Now the CBC will look a little funny. The hemoglobin and hematocrit will start to go down because now your heme synthesis is affected. There are now RBCs that are microcytic in your peripheral blood smear. Microcytic, again, Check my RBC in this video. Microcytic means the MCV is less than 80 and they are smaller than the usual RBC. Your ferritin, same with the first stage, which is the iron depletion, your ferritin is now lower. This is your iron stores, so you don't have iron stores. Your iron stores are depleted. And again, same with your first stage, your TIBC is now up. Your total iron binding capacity is now up. That means you have a lot of transferrin, but there's not an iron that's binding with it. So that's why it's increased. So your TIBC is increased because your body is compensating. It thinks, oh, maybe I'm just not making enough transferrin to store the iron that's there. But in reality, you just really don't have iron. And you have a lot of transferrin, and that's why your TIBC is now up. And now we are on the last stage, stage 3, iron deficiency anemia. 
<laughs> yeah, that's what it's named. So iron deficiency anemia. This is the final stage of iron deficiency anemia. It's called iron deficiency anemia. So the final stage of iron deficiency anemia will show RBCs that are severely deficient in iron. Okay, so now your H and H hemoglobin hematocrit is now markedly low. It's decreased. And the RBCs are now hypochromic and microcytic. So they're small and there's no hemoglobin in them. That's why they're hypochromic. And then the bone marrow has decreased hemoglobinization. And that's, you know, that's a given because you don't have enough iron. You're not going to be able to make hemoglobin. There is now severe depletion of iron in your whole body. So this is what's bad about iron deficiency anemia because most patients won't get diagnosed until they reach the last stage, the third stage of iron deficiency anemia. So let's start with the clinical features of IDA. How does it present? It can show up in a period of months to years. So it, it builds up. It's not just like, oh, I got iron deficiency anemia. Again, there were stages. So the severity of the disease grows over time. So symptoms are fatigue, irritability, headache, weakness, especially with exercise, shortness of breath, tachycardia, your pale skin color because you don't have enough hemoglobin you're not your rbcs are hypochromic and yeah that's pretty much it so you just you definitely just don't have enough oxygen in your body because you don't have enough hemoglobin because you don't have enough iron there's also these strange things that happen to some patients they they have pica which is the persistent eating of non-food substances like they eat clay, dirt. Dirt is called geophagia or ice which is phagophagia. That's really strange but yeah apparently that's one of the symptoms too. And then for infants this is a little bit more serious because they're babies, they're de developing bodies so they do need hemoglobin and iron. So if they do have iron deficiency anemia they are at risk for developmental behavior problems, motor difficulties, irritability, loss of memory, difficulties in learning, and of course, poor growth. Because again, you need more blood to grow. And that's it. So now we're going to move on to lab findings. Okay, so let's start with the peripheral blood. So now you have hypochromia and microcytic um, RBCs. You have anisocytosis and side note this is the easier way of memorizing anisocytosis aniso any size that's how i memorize it so it's any size that means there's a difference in size variation between the rbcs that means greater than 14.5 percent rdw so if there's an exam and that's the presentation it's easier to identify also, there are target cells, elliptocytes, dracocytes, and the reticulocyte count is lower. And I just wanted to add, so for anisocytosis, it's aniso, any size. And for poikilo, this is another way of memorizing poikilocytosis. I just imagine that poikilo is polygon, so it's shape. That's how I memorize those two and differentiate them. So. But then some cases are anisopoikilocytosis. That means they have difference in size variation and they present different shapes of RBCs. So that's that. That's another thing that I can share with you. Okay, moving on to lab findings though. So for iron, serum iron is decreased. There's, there's literally no iron. So serum iron is decreased. The IBC is up. Ferritin again is low no iron stores at all so ferritin is low and this is true for all the stages of ida your stores are all depleted there's no iron stores and this is the first sign of iron deficiency anemia so having low ferritin is actually a telltale sign that this specific case is a iron deficiency anemia this helps you differentiate iron deficiency anemia from other hypochromic microcytic anemias. So now let's move on to treatment. So you have to address what's happening with the patient first. You know, do they need transfusion already? Is it severely low hemoglobin hematocrit? So you have to 
take care of that first before anything else and then after that you give them oral supplements of iron which is ferrous sulfate they're usually given three tablets a day of 60 milligrams of elemental iron aside from that there's also an intravenous way of providing iron if the person can't take the oral medication and this is also helpful so the expectation is that the patient would respond to treatment by producing one gram of hemoglobin per month and that's it we're done with iron deficiency anemia Wow, so that took longer than expected and so I am just going to post this as a series. So the first one is this, iron deficiency anemia, and the second one will be anemia of chronic disease. So stay tuned, thank you for watching again, and please do like and subscribe.